This is the freeze. Jason F and Serge, how you doing, man? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. It, it, that was a tough one today, wasn't it? Yeah, I would. I, it would have been nice to get the sweep, man. But you know, I, I'll take winning a couple of series, you know, a whole bunch of them in a row over the sweep. I, you know, but it, yeah, they ten strikeouts today, runners in scoring position. It was just, it went back to an ugly day today, a little bit. How are you so. feeling about the offense in general? I mean, even when we're winning it's like four or five runs a game. I just don't, I mean, we had those couple of blowouts against the Orioles, but I mean, it's the Orioles, you know, I mean, everybody should blow out the Orioles this sure. time of year, at least while their, their pitching is depleted. I just don't feel real great about the offensive philosophy right now. What do you think? I'm of the same mentality. And it's crazy because, and looking at this series, I mean, pretty much every game was a low scoring game, like you'd mentioned. So there, it looks like they're getting better at learning how to win low scoring games, but I'm looking for the slugfest and I want to see how well they perform in a slugfest versus these bigger lineups. And until then I still, you know, cause they still go back and they have a couple of good games and they go back to too many strikeouts, runners in scoring yeah. position, rounding out, missing key opportunities. So, but that said, they haven't been at full strength yet with the lineup. So I'm really waiting to see, and obviously it's going to be delayed now, but I'm waiting to see void in there and Rizzo and, and all these guys kind of clicking on all cylinders and, um, you know, I, until then, I, I'm going to reserve a little bit of judgment on it, but you're right. I mean, they, they haven't been, I haven't seen anything that, that stood out yet. With the I guys. mean, it's August 8th. We, we should have clicked on full cylinders by now. I mean, you got to figure it out at some point, right? I, yeah. I don't see any way that Marcus Timms keeps his job. I mean, the, the fans just, even if we go on to win the World Series, let's say we, by some miracle, we get great pitching back. You know, and we, we make a run. This offense for now 80% of the season has just been a complete bust. Yeah, and, and I don't see Tyler Wade all of a sudden turning into Babe Ruth. No. So, you know, there's, I don't see him doing eight straight eight straight games of home runs. or You know, I just just don't see it. But you're right. It's, it hasn't been the offense that we thought it would be. What are you thinking about Glaber Torres right now? I mean, it's just so frustrating watching a guy who two years ago – we're saying could have like an a rod level prime. And now he's looking more like spike Owen. <laughs> it's the perfect guy. You're right too. Cause he, he, he's got the talent and he's got like, you could see like him almost being on the verge of breaking out, but then getting, having another five strikeout game or four strike again. It's so frustrating because he's so talented and he does this a lot. Even today he had three hits and he looked solid and, and he looked, he had some good defensive play. But I'm, I'm wondering tomorrow, is he going to strike out three times again? And what, like, what's going to happen? Because he does have the talent of, of, these, of these bigger guys. Even though stud shortstops, he's got the talent, but he, he's not putting it together consistently, which is so freaking frustrating. I mean, I watch him swing, and, and you see him foul a ball off and go running towards first base because he's so off balance or running towards the first base dugout. Nobody else does that. How does Marcus Timms not see this and correct it? Yeah, I think Marcus Timms also has to tell him, dude, you're not Adam Dunn. Okay. Yeah. Stop going for the 500 foot home run every at bat. Get a single, get a double. Right. Get a bunch of them. We're yeah. killing him, and he's the only guy who hit today. I mean, three hits. You know, Judge, we, I've seen in the chats a lot about Judge and Clutch. Is Judge Clutch? I mean, he's had some really good postseasons. He's absolutely Clutch in the wild card round every single time. But regular season, late in the game, I kind of don't want him up in a key situation. How do you feel? It's one of the things. He's, he's struck out in so many key situations today and a whole bunch of other games recently. And, and you're right, too. I mean, he's clutch at certain patches, particularly in the early postseason. But then he comes up short a lot, you know, a lot, just as much as, you know, Giancarlo Stan has been doing. And it's, and it's, it's unfortunate. And, and I get, I get a lot of, I get pounded in my videos because I've, I've mentioned the possibility of moving him mm -hmm. in a trade and obviously extracting a haul back in return. And I thought the, the, uh, the deadline would have been a good opportunity to consider it because of reasons like this. And because he's the only guy who can bring back a really, really, really pretty big ransom in return with a year and a half of control. I, but Again, he's been big for the Yankees, and I know he's a big revenue maker, and he's got the judges' chambers, and he's got merch, and he's got all kinds of stuff. I get it, but we need more clutch guys in there. We really do. Some Tino Martinez guys, some Scott Brocious guys, and as much as I like Judge, he hasn't been that. 
Um, and it's unfortunate. I mean, I, I feel like the younger fans who watch us talk, they get fed up with all the talks of the Tinos and the O'Neills and the Brociuses. But those guys, they were money, dude. I mean, it, it's going to last a lifetime. I'll be talking about those guys for my whole life because they were the epitome of what an offense should be. You got somebody on first base, they get them over, and they pick up a base hit, get them in. Runner on third, less than two outs. You can't get through anybody in that order back from the late 90s without them hitting a sack fly or at least getting it in. They would shorten up. They understood that the game was bigger than them. Here we see every time the Yankees put a couple of men on base, you see the big swings. You see the home run stroke, and it's just not working. That approach has got to go. It's got to go. That's why I give Rugnett Odor a lot of love because he's the clutch guy of the team this year. Yeah. It's a bunt or a single. He's getting the clutch home runs. He doesn't have the sexy stats, but he comes up more often than not when it counts and he ties the game up He puts him over the lead and he's not getting the credit he deserves in my opinion. And the Yankees are, can't, they're paying him $5 a year. Like, <laughs> so, and that production for that money, dude, the return on investment is a million times over. I still don't get that. Like, why is Texas eating all of that money with like 20 something million dollars to play against them? And I get he wasn't great in Texas, but why, why eat all this money? And Gallows and yeah. Rizzo. Huh. This is where, this is where, you know, as much as people want Brian Cashman gone, that's where he works his magic. Yeah. People, yeah. he doesn't make the flashiest trades all the time. And his biggest trades happen in the off season, but he gets people to eat money. I don't know how the hell he does it. Yeah. People eat millions of dollars. He's you know, he's probably got some good financial guys working for him, and they've tried. It's like draw up some numbers that make it look like it's a good idea, and I'll send this over to them. You know, I, I feel like it's 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 some kind of reverse psychology or something. He's he's working his magic. Yeah, and he he does it. I mean, and I was happy with the trade deadline, but I was more happy that he got. I don't know how we got all these guys over here and didn't add not even a million dollars to the payroll. What do you think about Luis Heal so far? I'm really impressed. So am I. Two consecutive games like this. He's got poise. You know, he's got velocity. He's got command. And he's, it's, he, you see how pumped up he gets. I like it. I don't yeah. see many Yankees like that. And he's animated when he makes the plays. Voight made a great play today. Great defensive play. Yeah. He that the first, and he was pumped up, man. But he's the reason why I think they should give the young guys a little bit more opportunity at times. He's highly touted pitchers because they haven't done a great job at developing starting pitchers. Relievers, yeah. yes, but not starters. So, but when you have a guy like this, it makes sense to give him a shot, especially now we have three starters out. So. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of times the Yankees wait for somebody to be a finished product before they call them up. You know, look at how long they've kept some guys in the minor leagues. And what, what I think they fail to understand is nobody's ever a, a finished product until they're past their prime. Because people's, pe you know, guys continue to improve. They learn from the other pitchers. Somebody had a great comment about how when Andy Pettit came up, he didn't have that great pickoff move. He learned it from Jimmy Key, you know? Um, guys learn things on the job. And, you know, if somebody has all the talent and they're really close, you know, they might it might just be one little tweak from sitting next to Corey Kluber on the bench that makes it click, you know? And, and, and that's why I'm a big advocate of getting young guys, young guys out there. I think that, um, you know, his command issues that we read about I've been a little bit overblown. He seems like he's around the strike zone to me, 99 miles an hour. Are you kidding? Decent slider, not amazing slider, but I think that'll improve too. But uh, yeah. All right, so what, what else is bothering you about this team right now? About the team? Um, well, that's so many guys are out, yeah. and, uh, you know, which sucks, but that's just the reality of it. Um, there's too many strikeouts and runners in scoring position by the key guys. By the big by the big bats like you said it's just it's a judge stanton it's kind of an overlay of the top of the lineup and um they, i think they, they really have to refine that they have to get better at that and again i don't see tames tim's coming back after this year they don't get better at that what the hell's get, up with dj he's another one he's inconsistent all season and yeah. it's just it's not it's it's almost like the pre-yankees dj or the pre you know coming back a little bit back down to earth because he was, you know, he was out of worldly last year I and mean, he was really good. And I wouldn't mind if he batted 280, 290, which, but was just consistent, but he looks overmatched more than he did before against mm -hmm. certain pitchers. And my fear is that with these guys, and when you go up against a team like the white Sox, who now have a three headed monster in the bullpen, I'm like, 
you, you know, sales coming back to Boston. And you have, and then Barrios is now with the Blue Jays. It's not the sexiest moves, but the Yankees are going to have trouble when they're facing multiple starters that are that good in a row. And I'm not even talking about the pa- the Padres and the Dodgers, like the behemoths, like yeah, who have like nine starting pitchers. <laughs> but that's where I think what frustrates me the most is the inability of the key guys. The, the the bottom half of the lineup is contributing more than the top half, more often than not. And so I have a I have a theory on DJ, a uh, uh, a prescription, if you will. I think he needs to go to a lighter bat. I feel like his bat's dragging a little bit. That's why he's hitting ground balls. He's just a little bit off kilter with his timing. I think if he goes down just a just an ounce on his bat, he might bring back some of those line drives. But that's just you know just from watching afar. That's what I see, and I think Glaber too. I see a lot of those pop-ups, you know, he had so many pop-ups. I feel like that's just, just a tick late, just a tick late and a tick under the ball. He might need to go down a, a weight also. That's a, that's a really good point. You know, sometimes, yeah. Cause sometimes the heavy bats are a little bit slow. They're a yeah. little bit just, they just missed that. Something that could have easily been a home run. Yeah. You know, and, and, and again, this is not, they're not swinging. Like Babe Ruth swung like a 50 ounce bat. <laughs> yeah. Like a tree stump. Like, I don't know how he did it, but these guys, I don't know, maybe 36, 35 ounces, whatever it is, but I think you're right. Maybe cutting an ounce or two might do them some good. And even with their, with their stances, it'll help keep the back elbow up a little bit. So they're not uppercutting as much as the, as much as they're but uppercutting Torres is notorious for these uppercut yeah. swings. So, so many pop-ups. I mean, I, I, I would almost rather see a, a strikeout than a pop-up. A pop-up is like, it's just such an easy play and you have to wait for it like 10 seconds to come down. It's like, well, I'm waiting 10 seconds for it to be pissed off at an out. You know, it's, I find pop-ups to be aggravating. That's a good observation. That's a really good one. So, all right. So final question, I'll, I'll let you go get on with your Sunday. Do you think the Yanks have enough to make the playoffs? I mean, do you think that, you know, with all the COVID and all the guys out, the inconsistent offense, we've kind of made a little bit of run here. I mean, it's been the hottest we've been in a while, but we're still not quite there. You think this team has enough? I think they have enough, but enough to – I just don't know how far enough is going to be. Like, I think they can secure one of the wild card spots. I would much rather them, and they might have an outside shot of winning the division. If Boston keeps kind of sliding and, you know, and Kyle Schwarber had a groin strain today. So he's set back even further. So one of their reinforcements is not going to be here for a little bit. And T- Tampa Bay's playing well though. They're in first place now. Yeah. And I, 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 it's going to be really hard to dethrone Tampa Bay, honestly. So I, I, you know, wild card seems to me the best, part for me but i every time they win the wild card their matchups are so tough in the first round yeah it doesn't really put them in a position to get to the second round that often i i've that's what worries me so i, I think they have enough to maybe get the second wild card maybe the first wild card but i don't know you know i i really wish they would have gotten barrios instead of heaney but heaney's what we got and even though he he showed me a little bit more than he did the first time unless cole is back at full strength montgomery and you know and unless Severino, in my opinion, and I, I mentioned this to you before, is put in the bullpen, mm-hmm. at least for long relief. I don't want to throw him to the wolves yet and have, have him risk another setback in the starting rotation. Yeah. I mean, putting him, getting two or three innings of absolute darts out of him in the bullpen, because you know how he's nasty he is for two, three innings. And then he starts to get hit. Yeah. Well, give him those two, three innings for long relief, and then you transition him to some of these other bullet arms. He, I think he has to be here, and I think they have to figure out a way to get Greg Allen in the lineup. Yeah, um, I really do. Uh, as much as I like Brett Gardner, Brett, Greg Allen just gives them more options, more versatility. Yeah. Um, you know, and and he does the same things. He just does them a little bit better than Gardner right now. So, and if they can figure out a way to get Voight and Rizzo and Gallo and all these guys firing, and that's the one of the problems that they've had this year. A couple of guys get hot, the other guys get cold, and then it's flipped, vice versa. Could these guys get hot? Those guys. It's never been all together firing on all cylinders at yet. So. Yeah. Yeah, to me, that's that's just bad coaching. It's bad game management. It's just uh, consistency comes from everybody doing their job every day. And if guys are letting their foot off the gas a little bit, I mean, that there's there's nobody pushing them. You know what I mean? I, and it, the, the only other thing that I'll say about the inconsistency is that it's more frustrating to see an inconsistent team that, can dominate at times um, than it is to see a team that just flat out stinks all year long. Cause this, this team has the talent to be better. They're just not doing it. Yeah. On paper there on paper, they're a division team, you know, yeah. but again, it's just performance is different than on paper. <clears throat> yeah. And 
I go back to the when I mentioned in the draft too sometimes, like they draft in the back of the first round just like Tampa does, just like Boston does. But those prospects on the other team, they're better than the Yankees prospects for the most part. The Yankees have a good team. They're underrated on uh, farm. But like look at the how many Juan DeFrancos come through Tampa Bay that don't come to New York. Yeah. You know? I'm and, excited about Volpe, though. I'm really excited about Volpe. I like him. I like Peraza, too. But I think Volpe – I, I think they could move Peraza in a trade if it's for a frontline starting pitcher, if yeah. they don't move. Him. I know everybody asked for Volpe at the 10 line. I'm glad they did yeah. not move him. I like him. I like Gil. And I'm, I, I, I'm really excited about the Martian too. So, yeah. And, uh, he's off to a bit of a slow start. You know, he's come down to earth after a little bit of a, 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 you know, a hot beginning, but I'm confident just from watching him play that he's got the tools. I just want to keep the Yankees hitting coaches away from him. Let him do his thing. Yeah, no, 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 Marcus Timms. No, <laughs> Jason, appreciate it, my man. Always a pleasure, brother. All right, take care, buddy. Bye, man. <laughs> Good job. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters and anyone else who has supported this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it the old thumbs up and subscribe for more Yankees content year round. If you really enjoyed it, check out The Freeze. It's the official podcast of this channel. Or pick up some swag from the Teespring store. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.